Hey guys, it's Ellen and welcome to my channel. Today is Friday and on Friday it's Floral Friday. We're working on super easy watercolor practice. You know, super simple flowers. I'm using a lot of brushes today and my usual gouache and I'll show you how you take gouache and create these things as well. No need for a traceable step by step creating daisies, buttercups, and some forget-me-nots all in this composition. I talk about how I do this. It's super easy, super fun. Anyone can do this. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also, uh, don't forget to check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, traceables, uh, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays, and a live stream on the top tier. It's just a place people can go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. Yep. Um, you can check it out right up here in a second. So without further ado, let's get painting. Some fun daisies, buttercups, and forget-me-nots. Okay guys, for this watercolor practice, I'm gonna go over my supplies. I have a piece of uh, Arsh 100% cotton cold pressed paper. This is nine by 12. I taped down with Scotch Magic tape just on some thick cardboard to hold it in place. You don't have to do that. Um, paper towel here, water jars. The paints, I always have them in the description box and I talk about them as I use them. And brushes, I'm gonna be using several brushes today. It's just a wash down a color. I can use my flat wash one inch brush. Uh, I might play around with my 12 and, and my 10 Neptune series, even the scrum back or number 10 brush. Um, definitely using my this Filbert Princeton Velvet Touch series brush. It's a number eight, make some daisies. And I might play around with this three inch, inch flat wash brush just to, there's no name for this and possibly my Princeton 8 long round there's a lot of brushes just to play around with this is what you gotta do you have to play around with brushes that you have if you don't have them just play around with the brushes that you do have so in the beginning we're gonna do a nice quick little wash a color wash um, it could be blue it could be pink but I'm gonna do blue so I'm gonna take my ultramarine blue I'm gonna water this down a little bit here I might add a little Prussian blue to that so I'm going to be watering blue here and then maybe add some gray tones to it. So if I add a little of this color, this is a color called neutral tint. It's kind of like a bluish gray. So I'm mixing a bunch of different blues. So you see I had Prussian blue, ultramarine blue, and this is neutral tint here. Now I'm going to grab water on my brush. See I dipped it in the jar. I'm going to grab this colors. I'm just going to start to wash in and I'll grab more water and the color. See, ultimate blue, neutral tint. We're going to just put a nice blue wash down. Now you can just grab with your brush some other colors. See, I'm grabbing the neutral tint and just throwing it in. Now I'm not going to go to the edge of the paper. Kind of go, oh, sorry. <laughs> That's my Brodier blue, which is really beautiful. I could be using that in other places. So I'm going to grab some more of this gray, kind of like a moody kind of blue. When you stick in the gray, mix in with the other blues. If you don't have this color gray, you know, people ask me all the time, like, what can I use if I don't use a whole bind? Use any color of this paint that you like. You can use. Windsor and Newton, you can use anything. They don't have the same names in certain colors. They don't have peacock blue. So you need like a turquoise or maybe a cobalt blue. Um, they don't have Prussian blue, or maybe they do, I don't know. But they do have ultramarine. That's like kind of a standard blue. Cobalt is a standard blue also. So I'm grabbing more of the ultramarine mixed in with the neutral tint. I wanna have it like not flat. You want to see the strokes and the in, you know the imperfections of the color. Some areas will be darker than others. Notice how I'm grabbing some more of this gray and then deeper blue. We're going to have some areas darker and some areas lighter up here, a little bit lighter. And this is a preferred <laughs> kind of thing. Um, you don't even have to do blue, guys. You could do pink, green, yellow, whatever. But for my little thing today, I'm doing blue. 
add some more ultramarine. Just do a swath of color up here. It's all preference. Get a little bit deeper too, again. Some areas down here. All right, so if you cut your color in, if you feel like it's a little too dark, you can kind of remove some of the paint. I'll grab, clean my brush off, and I'll lift some of the paint up. But I generally don't want to do that. I want to have that deeper tones. And most of it. And you can make any kind of texture you want. You can grab a sea sponge and the texture. All right, so I'm going to let this dry and then we're going to start painting on top of this. I'm going to let this dry, don't touch it. <laughs> All right, now that that's dry, we're going to go and mix up some greens. I already have a deep green mixed up here. I used some Prussian blue, some yellow, and a little bit of burnt umber. I'm going to use my Princeton long round for this particular part. Uh, Grab my yellow again, and I'll mix up some bright green too. Um, the peacock blue, like I said, it's a nice kind of like a turquoise blue. See how you can see that turquoise? So you can buy a turquoise. There's tons of uh, companies that make turquoise. And see the consistency is not super wet. You, you can, it rolls a little bit, but not fast. So that's how you can tell it's moving off the palette, but not as fast as if it was a lot of water in there. I'm gonna grab some more yellow. I don't know if you'd sushi, but it's kind of like the wasabi paste consistency. And up here, I'm gonna mix up some more of this. See, I grab some Prussian blue, the nice deep blue, and the yellow to make a dark green. I always like to add a little burnt over. I have a little more blue. Again, the consistency is almost like a thick, wet paint. Not super soupy. And then we're going to start to take this brush and just do these little marks where we're going to indicate where we're going to put our daisies and flowers. So I like to just kind of movement my hand like this. See? I got the nice point on here. Just going like this and then making little marks up here. Just placing where we're gonna put some stuff. It could even come off the page, you know, from the blue. We want these kind of wild kind of stems, just like that. See, a little lined. Mm. Can make a little bit thicker ones. And some coming off over there. Just to, not everywhere, some places. Now I'm going to clean off my brush and grab that pale bright green. You can start to do marks where you push down and pull up. So oh, a little blot. See? If it make a little blot, just go like that. So I'm going to push down and pull up, pull back, back. So you get more different types of leaves and grasses. Now the trick is to go See, I push, push down and go like that. Again, different types of leaves and markings. Just kind of wiggle the paintbrush and just make different leaves. We're just making this like wild kind of grass. You can make leaves like this. See how I just wiggle the, the brush? If you want to make leaves with a flat wash brush, I'll show you how to do that. Let's get some more of this paint. Water, 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 water. A little more paint. Okay. Again, it's like this twisting movement. I like this bright chartreuse -y kind of green. Just making those little dabs and doodahs the leaves. And lines. And that green's really gonna pop. Oops, sorry. <laughs> pop up that blue. 
making lots of noise in my studio. You can mix, this is what I'm going to talk about many times in this project today, uh, gouache. And so I grab this white gouache right into the green. You can mix gouache into any color. And look at that, so it's a lime green. But gouache is going to sit on top of the, the watercolor. See? It's going to sit right on top because it has some chalk in it. So it's more opaque. So I'm coming from the bottom here, going upward. Just making these fun little marks and leaves. Okay, we're going to start with that. So we're going to use the gouache again, and I have this filbert brush. It makes perfect little daisies or forget-me-nots and buttercups. I'm going to remove some of the gouache that has the green on it. Move this up here so you can see. It's a great brush. I have many tutorials in YouTube. Um, on my homepage in YouTube, there's a little stain, my, you know, um, magnifying glass on the right hand side on top. Type in the words, keywords, like filbert brush, and they should pop up. So I'm just getting the gouache, I'm adding a little bit of water to it, not too much. We're going to start to take this brush, I'm zoom in a little bit, hold it on its side and make the little daisies. Now you can come back or go forward. See? I like that. Choo, choo. That's the movement. Simple daisies. And again, because it's gouache, it's going to lay right on top of this paper. Now we don't want totally open daisies and maybe want some bigger, longer petals. See? Just kind of going like this. And we're going to create these really pretty, simple, super easy. See, just simple marks like that. And you're going in. That gouache is a little too thick. Just a little bit of water. Mine was like basically sticking right on there. And the darker the um, background we made, the more they'll stand out. You can use white acrylic ink too if you don't have gouache. Because some of my tutorials call for the acrylic ink, and so play around with that also. I can show you. I don't need the. I can grab the white acrylic ink. And it should do it. See? It might be a little more translucent though. Than the gouache. But then you might want a variety of that kind of look. So I'll go back to the gouache. Again, just a little bit of water so you can have just enough to move the paint around. There's all different types of white gouaches. I have zinc white, I use permanent white. Um, you know, to me, I just grab the cheapest one. I don't really necessarily think it's important to get the most expensive one. Now that watercolor is still wet, so it kind of mixed in with the gouache. I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm going to put a bunch of daisies around. And you see some of it's more opaque. You can go back over it again if you want, if it's not opaque enough for you. Maybe you want skinnier petals, so I'll grab my Princeton 8 long round. Just be warned, by the way, gouache can really wreck your brushes. See how I'm making these skinnier petals? The filbert makes nice rounded petals, and maybe you don't want a rounded petal um, daisy. Maybe you want a pointier one. Then I would use a Princeton long round. I'm just going to go back in here over some of these. Like the combination of the two. Sweet little daisies. Really kind of just loose. And you could do some little half ones kind of falling down. See that little, you know, just they're bent. This one was just kind of like falling down daisy. Could do another falling down daisy. 
and up here and maybe up here now that gouache dries pretty quickly so you're gonna have to keep adding a little bit of water but see this is very really really simple now of course because it's a daisy I'm gonna take the cadmium yellow deep and you can just basically put a teeny bit of water in. This paint will act almost like gouache. And we can just kind of put that right in the center. Really, it's just look how simple this daisy is. Right? Now you can make even yellow flowers. You can put some buttercups in here. Very delicate, simple. I wouldn't use that for that brush. I would use the filbert for kind of like a buttercup looking flower. So if you want to have some pretty yellow buttercups, just push down. Push down with the filbert. So you kind of go around and you have a buttercup. You can even add some white gouache to your yellow to really make it pop out. Again, Maybe have it on the side like that. Put a few, you know, I wouldn't put them everywhere. And then the center would be kind of yellow and that bright green. So we have buttercups and daisies. Grab some more white gouache, mix it in with the yellow. Just pushing down like a four or five petal flower. One, two, three, four, five. Put some of the petals on sideways. So I see I'm just going to turn my brush. You can mix in a little brilliant orange with that yellow just to change the color tone a little bit. And of course the center, I might put a little lime green in first and then go back over with the yellow with the white gouache. See, add the white gouache to the yellow and then go right back in the center. Kind of like little doodad dots. Green and yellow. Go back and add your gouache, doodad dots. It's about a cup. See that? And then you can just make a little, I'm just making little yellow marks if you wanted to do forget me nots. So this can be a combination of flowers. I have this color called Verdier Blue. So beautiful. Whole line again, really concentrated right out of the tube. You can add a little white gouache to it, but it's gonna lay pretty nicely. Just again, like another petal flower, like this, but maybe a little bit tinier. And you put them in around the daisies again, really just simple, kind of clustered them. Maybe up here, so we've got a bunch of little sweet little flowers the get me nots and you add the white gouache to that blue and that should pop out also grabbing the white gouache and the blue see this one's highlighted get me not we used to have a ton of these in my yard and now they're not there anymore it's kind of sad see just the, the the lighter the color over here in the darker area the more it's going to pop out just little sweet little petals four or five petals one two three four five so i'm holding the brush this way and then pushing it this way. And then the center of those would be yellow. So we've got that yellow mixed with the white gouache because it will really pop up. And it's a little wet still. You might have to wait till some of it dries before you can go on top with the yellow. Now at this point, you can go around and play around with adding in more leaves and whatnot. 
So I have some nice dark green up here. And I can go in here and just put in some filler in some nice leaves just to pop up these guys a little more. Can add that nice green, mix it in. See, I'm just kind of really swooshing around color here. Take some of the burnt umber. And put some of that in there, some browns, you know, like in a, in a little grasses wouldn't be one note green, one note blue, yellow. I'm going back in and then some more leaves. Just see, I'm kind of clustering it all in one section though. Have you noticed this? So that's the composition that I've decided. You could do all the whole page. But that's how I want. You can add little veins into the, the leaves you made over here. Little marks coming out here. Bigger leaves. Some maybe bigger leaves clustered down the bottom. I'm going to add some more deeper colors. I added some neutral tint. Get it really dark just in that one little section. And it adds more interest to your painting. These are all the tricks on composition. So, daisies, you could even, you know, really take some of this. We didn't splatter, but we should splatter because sometimes it's like a nice little element. I like to do everything in the kitchen sink. So I take the white acrylic ink, a little more translucent, and splatter some, some of that, just a little bit, just a touch. Not much more than that. Um, you don't want to go crazy. You want a little bit, maybe splatter some of the green too. So I'll mix up some of this bright green again, because that would be really pretty. Wouldn't just splatter um, the white, you gonna splatter some of the green. Especially up in here. Grab some more yellow. And then you can splatter with a deeper green too. All these things make the composition really interesting. Go back up in here. I'm just going to add a couple more marks coming out this way. And then some bright green leaves. All the fun stuff. Maybe a different color green, maybe this medium green, which we don't have really. More of a Kelly kind of green. You can put over in here. Again, interest. So I have multiple greens, different flowers, and that's that. Okay, you see me kind of doing this, but you get the idea. And that's that. So you might go back in when these kind of colors dry and add, you know, your yellow center. The blue is still kind of wet. Go in and highlight that on the forget-me-nots. Just fill in. And then with the buttercup, highlight just some bright yellow in here using the gouache. And those will pop out too. And then you can add some floating, you know, I might add some floating uh, daisies up top. Grab some of my gouache. I lost my gouache. Kind of messy. I like to paint messy though. I don't know if you've noticed that. Oh, see? And there's green on that gouache. Put some other daisies up here. I feel like I need something up in the left hand corner. So I'll put another daisy up there. So that's a little more wild. And of course the yellow center. And that's that guys. So play around with the brushes. We used quite a few today. Play around with the paints. Do a wash in the background. It could be green, right? All the green like you're in the grass. And then you're seeing all these really fun and fun flowers. Super simple, super easy. 
a lot of movement, splattering. This is what you do for watercolor practice. This is how you create. Maybe you didn't have it on the left-hand side. Maybe you had it on the right-hand side. Maybe you had it coming down from the top. You know, maybe you had it both coming this way. So, play. That's what it's all about. Play. Enjoy. And all you need in the other tool for your arsenal is a tube of gouache. So mix, you can mix them in all your colors. And you can have this highlighted kind of scenario. So, that's the beauty of it. I like to create great compositions with it. And, um, you know, if you're interested in some more gouache videos, I can do more of that. I've been painting gouache for a long time. I would say 20 years. <laughs> so it's a great medium. It's You can use it like watercolor. So it actually has versatile, more, vers more, ver more versatility than watercolor does. Because you can water it down and it turns very translucent like watercolor. And then you don't water it down and it's opaque. So you can play around like things like this. You can actually paint a really dark background and then put the gouache on top. So you can't do that with watercolor. Anyway, I'm rambling. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have fun, practice, paint, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> Take care guys, have a great weekend and I'll speak to you soon.